Welcome to another broadcast today brought to you by GearBest.com. Today's show is brought to you by their website. And uh, once again, they've sent me some cool products to review and to show off for you guys. Uh, originally, they had sent me a Hubson drone. And if you haven't seen the video about the Hubson drone yet, uh, you're going to see it from a guy who'd never owned a drone before and knew very little about them and has since learned quite a bit. For example, the quality of that drone is really good in comparison to even the stuff that they carry at a local hobby store here in the St. Louis area. I went and looked at them and priced them and uh, the the remote and the quality of the actual drone are really good really high standard so it's a great place to start if you're looking for a drone as a gift but today we're going to look at some lesser expensive gifts that uh, the guys at GearBest sent me now they said Brad you did such a great job on that uh, drone video we'd like to send you something else to to promote our channel and I said okay look let's look for something that that you guys could afford to buy that would be a great gift idea either for yourself or for the nerd and our tech geek in your family. So let's start today with the uh, the USB capture device. Now this here is a, it's essentially a Walkman. It's a cassette Walkman that you can use as a Walkman, but it also allows you to convert your cassettes over to MP3. And it comes with the PC software to do that. It's got a USB port on it. Pretty cool. The next thing we've got is this head up display car. This is a device that you can plug into your OBD port in your car, lay this on your dash, and it gives you a wealth of information about your vehicle, including your speed. And it reflects off the front windshield. So you don't have to actually have it, you know, mounted or sitting up there. You just, uh, read it right off your windshield there so it reflects it's pretty neat so we'll plug this up and see how it works this here this power amplifier now I've done a review on quite a few of these because I was really out of curiosity uh, so there's several of these that are similar to this on my channel already this is the first one I've done that has an FM radio as well as a remote control with it but uh, the idea behind it is, is it's an mp3 player and you can play mp3s off of USB flash drives or SD cards and uh, it works off 12 volts does not come with a power supply so it uh, gives you the flexibility to either connect it to your car or connect it in your house so we're going to hook it up in the house today i've got a power supply that i ripped off from a a netgear modem or a netgear router so i didn't i didn't actually steal it it was mine but the the router in, in fact was you know outdated so in any case uh, it comes in three lovely colors uh today we're going to look at a red one that's uh that's in this box so again these are items you can find at gearbest.com and uh, check out their website there's quite a bit on there uh, for unusual gift ideas for the holidays here christmas coming up so all right so let's get started and we're, we'll dive into this uh to this usb device first So once again, this is the Walkman USB cassette capture audio device. We'll go ahead and open this uh, up, this little puppy here. And uh, there's the device itself. Let's see what else we get in the package here. We get some really super high quality headphones here. Probably better than Bose right there. I say that tongue in cheek. It's probably not that great. Uh, these are, uh, oh, okay. This is the regular USB cord. And then we have installation cd Ooh, and it's on one of those little three inch cds Ooh, nifty kind of cool okay and what else we have we have a operation manual okay very good so let's take it out of the plastic see the quality of it here see how sturdy it is it's got a little piece of tape stuck on the outside all right, so U.S. Super, oh, this is Super USB cassette capture. Well, okay. Uh, what do we got here? On the top, we have a play button, stop button over here. We have Q and we have review. We have uh, a repeat mode here, and then we have a side-to-side -side switcher. So this is an auto reverse unit. Uh, it has uh, stereo, hi-fi, and mega bass. Oh yeah, gotta have that mega bass 
On the side here, we've got uh, headphone jack, USB port, volume control, and uh, what do we have over here? Oh, we even have a place to hook an AC adapter on there. So the uh, it's very very lightweight. Does it's not real heavy. Um, the eject button is over here. I'll push it down. Oh yeah, I like how it opens up to the side. That's kind of nice. And let's see, what does that say? Open. I guess that means it's open, huh? Oh wait, no, that's where we put the batteries. Oh yeah, look at there. The batteries go in there. Isn't that something? Okay. Well, this isn't metal, as you might think it might look, considering how shiny and pretty it is. But uh, and let's look at the head in there. Uh, it looks like a four-track head, so it doesn't have to actually flip the head over to switch the sides. Two pinch rollers, two capstans. There's your uh, the top of your motor right there. All right. It'll be interesting to see if and hear if the unit has uh, a lot of noise from the motor. A lot of these cheaper Walkmans have noisy motors in them. So when you play them, you hear this buzz in the background, as well as the hiss from the tape. So this is the unit here, and uh, I wanted you to take a good look at it because we're going to combine it with uh, another piece of this puzzle. And the next piece of the puzzle is going to be the amplifier. So let's take a look at the package contents of the amplifier. Here's our power amplifier, and we'll go ahead and get it unboxed next. Let's see what is inside here. It has an almost Christmassy looking uh, box here. All right, so here's our remote. Go ahead and take that out of the cellophane. And then of course there is a little pull tab down here at the bottom to engage the battery. We'll plug that in there. And we'll take it out of the box here. Looks like it's got some foam, like a foamy kind of cover in there. Boy, it's in there tight. Oh, I lied. It's actually blue. It's not red. Okay, we get to look at a blue one. All right, that's, uh, that's better, I guess. So that's your contents here. The remote, the amplifier itself, and the uh, digital display using instructions manual here. So uh, it's a power amplifier. How much power is it? Well, according to the manual here, it is 450,000 watts. So you could use this in like a stadium to power, uh, you know, uh, all, oh wait, uh, I'm sorry, I misread that. Uh, it's actually, uh, looks like it's 20 watts by 20 watts. So uh, appears to be a 40 watt amplifier. Sorry about that. I, I know you got excited. You were getting ready to buy one to to uh, blow your neighbors into the next yard, but uh, calm down, it's actually just 40 watts. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to connect these two things together. So uh, before I do that, let's kind of take a look at the front here. What do we got? We got a digital display. We have, uh, looks like previous track, next track, play, M. I don't know if that's memory. And uh, oh, the display has some kind of a look little foggy cover on it. We'll go ahead and take that little piece of piece of uh, cellophane off of there. We've got a tone control over on this side. It says DSP over here. Typically means uh, digital signal processing. And looks like we might have a graphic uh, display here, like a little some dancing lights. Uh, the top says uh, Kitten, Kittinger HY601 hi-fi power amplifier digital player on the back here we have our standard speaker connections with an antenna for the for the uh, fm radio dc 12 volt input there and input left and right rca jacks there so uh, this would also work as a um, as an amplifier for your turntable if you have a turntable that has a built-in preamp you could use this as a turntable amplifier or a cassette tape amplifier which is about what we're going to do here. All right, let me grab my speakers and we'll hook all this stuff up together and we'll have like a little little tiny stereo system here and see how it sounds. Of course, the speakers were not included in this package, so I will supply those separately. So my mini system is now connected. I did a little testing before I actually started the camera just to make sure everything was cool. Uh, so here's what we have. We have our little antenna here. We'll pull that up. So this is essentially a little stereo receiver here. And uh, I've got my 
cassette deck connected to it via the uh, 3.5 millimeter jack here on the side. I've got my speakers connected to the back of the amplifier and you can see them there connected there and then I've got my RCA jacks here and I've got my DC 12 volt going in right there. So uh, these are little JVC bookshelf speakers. These are model SP-UX5000. They have a power handling capacity of 20 watts at 4 ohms. So uh, this is a little bit more juice than these are, are made to handle, but I think we'll be all right. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and give it a shot here. Let's first try the cassette. Now, the cassette I noticed has a little bit of uh, motor noise to it, not too bad. And uh, it does have a little bit of flutter in it as well right off the bat. I have a cassette here that has piano music on it. You can see it here. It's got some royalty-free piano music on it. And it's always a good test if a cassette machine has flutter is to play piano music on it. So let's go ahead and rewind our tape here. And we're going to go ahead and try this out. All right, my tape is rewound. When I turn this on, it's going to go to... Uh, to the to the uh, FM tuner first, so we'll go ahead and test that out. This thing is loud. I will admit it, it's uh, it's got some volume to it. So uh, and and of course you get this really fun display on the front as well. All right, we're gonna go to the auxiliary right there. I did that by hitting this little uh, mode switch. Apparently that's what that actually means is mode. And I'm going to go ahead and hit play on my auxiliary tape deck there. There's the motor noise I was talking about. So you can hear a little bit of flutter there in the background. So we'll go ahead and turn that off. And uh, what I'll do is I'll put in, uh, I've got an Amy Grant Christmas album here. And uh, I know you probably hate me already, but uh, I'm a big fan of Amy Grant's Christmas stuff. In fact, I think she just released another Christmas album. She's got like 12 of them now, but uh, very well produced and a lot of fun. Me and the wife uh, get along on that regard. We like Amy Grant. So uh, let's go ahead and play a little bit of that. So you can hear a little bit of the flutter in there. These This does have brand new batteries in it, so it's not the batteries, but it does kind of sound like it's low on batteries or something. So not real impressed there with the quality of that. More impressed with the quality of this. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go to a uh, an MP3. Now I don't know if it could be the encoding that I used, but I had to find a particular song that would play, and you've heard this song on my channel several times. Pull the microphone out here so you can hear it jamming. And I'll go ahead and crank it up a little bit.
got my remote control here. Oh, it has an EQ button. Let's see what the EQ button does. That's interesting. Kind of changes the bass and mid-range response there. Got my pause, play. Got my track numbers down here at the bottom. Got me a uh, mode switch up there at the top. I can mute it. Yeah, there's my mute. And actually, I can actually uh, lower and uh, raise the volume as well, even though it does have a physical volume control. So sound quality is really, that is really good. Really amazingly good for, uh, for an inexpensive amplifier like that. Now you may say, hey Brad, what does it sound like when you connect this to your computer and um, uh, dub it off to an MP3? Well, I'm not going to actually take the time to do that. Uh, the way this thing works is when you plug it into your computer, it's going to recognize it as a, uh, an audio device, like a microphone perhaps. And then you could use your own capture software, or you could use the software that they have. Now, the thing is, if it sounds kind of yucky here on these speakers, it's going to sound yucky when you transfer it to MP3. So uh, again, I don't know if it's just this machine or it's the quality of it or whatever. But uh, again, you can expect the same quality to come from the tape as you would expect uh, through these speakers here as well. So um, our next item that we're going to take a look at is the thing that goes in your car. So let's take a moment out and check it out. But before we head to the car, I wanted to show you this up close. I noticed in my last shot there that uh, I was pretty far away from this thing, from the camera. So let's zoom in a little bit, let you see it close up. Go ahead and turn it on, let you see the lights up close as well. And uh, see the numbers changing on the dial. Got a USB port here for, uh, for a USB flash drive. You know, those uh, memory stick kind of things. Uh, some people call them zip drives. They're not actually zip drives, but uh, I got some lights there behind the volume control as well as your tone control there on the far left. So uh, quite a bit of features for uh, such a small little unit. Our next item is the head up display car. It's a model A8. And again, this unit is used to give you incredible information about your car from your car through the OBD port. And here are the package contents. So this is the unit, the display unit itself. It's uh, it's rather large. It's, in fact, it's it's uh, it's almost as big as a cell phone in size. It has a uh, USB port, brightness control, and on-off switch on the side there. You get a a reflective film cover, so you can just put this up on your uh, on the window in the dash and and see it a little bit better i suppose than actually reflecting it off of uh your car's window okay you can see that so uh, it's almost like a screen protector in the way it's set up it's got a protective film cover on both sides all right so that's an option that comes with it uh like i said earlier it doesn't need to be mounted anywhere you can just use this mat this uh, anti-slip mat you place this on your dash put the unit on top of it run the wire to it, and then again, you're gonna be looking up at the windshield and seeing this information reflected. Here is your OBD connector. If you guys hadn't seen an OBD connector, now you know what it looks like. Plugs right into your car, usually underneath the dash, and then uh, connects USB to this device. You have a manual here that goes over all the features of the unit, and uh, goes through them in great detail. So our next step, step would be to take it out and actually plug it into a car because, well, I don't have a car in my house. So let's take it out and uh, literally give it a test drive. So my first step here in my vehicle is to plug in the connector and it's gonna go right up here underneath my dash, which is located, uh, well, the location is just about right under my steering wheel. So I'm going to push that in and it's in there really good. And there really isn't a way to tuck this wire in. So I'm just going to drape the wire across the dash. And then um, I've got the little sticky uh, non-slip mat right there, which works really well. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it on that mat and let's turn her on. 
and you'll see it uh, light up there. It actually says HUD on it. So right now we're looking at my windshield. So I am looking at my windshield, looking at my starry uh, light display there, my LED laser light display. And uh, it tells me there's 13.2 volts. So here's the normal view of my gauges here in my 2013 Kia Soul. And of course they're all analog with the exception of the uh, odometer down there. But uh, if I peer up just a hair, I am showing you my digital display being displayed right there on my windshield. It actually works. It, it actually has a fairly readable, cool effect to it. It almost looks like a hologram. Here, let me move the camera around a little bit so you can see. Isn't that kind of crazy? So uh, the display is working. Let's go ahead and just take it for a little drive around the neighborhood here so you can see uh, what, that, what that looks like when it changes. Apologize in advance for the shaky camera. So you can see there uh, the numbers that are changing on the thing. I'm trying really hard to hold the camera steady, but uh, it's futile here at this point. But uh, the effect is really cool. Like I said, uh, if I zoom back a little bit so you can kind of see what my view looks like of driving. And uh, it appears right there in the bottom left of my window. So this should be the future. I mean, in, in the future, all of our cars should have a wealth of display information right here on our windshield. So that way we're not looking down away from the road. Our eyes are always on the road. And we made it back here to the driveway safe and sound. I think I'm going to just sit here for a couple of hours and look at this cool display and uh, ponder its awesomeness. By the way, thank you for watching this video. This will conclude our reviews today of these three products. Check out GearBest.com and please subscribe to my channel. Share with a friend and uh, you can check out my Facebook page at Facebook.com forward slash the number one and Databits. Check out that drone video that I made as well. And I thank you for watching.